Did you or someone you know ever attend a wedding where the bride or groom was left on the wedding day? What went wrong? Years ago, I worked at a reception hall for five plus years, and, while I never saw someone get left at the altar, I did see some pretty crazy stuff. If you would indulge me, I would like to recount my best story. Our facility had the reception hall inside and a big garden outside. If one were to get married at the reception hall, the garden would be where you would do it, even in the summer heat, which was quite awful as I had to wear a tux to work. Anyway, we were having a wedding where the bride was Indian, as in, from India, not Native American, and the groom was Scottish. They wanted it to celebrate both of their respective cultural traditions, so he wore a kilt and since her family was footing the bill, the garden had been made into a makeshift Indian shrine, an altar, flowers, the whole nine yards. You have to forgive me because my knowledge of Indian nuptial traditions is very lacking, but they had some musicians and singers, more like chanting, that were to rid out of a holy book. This would be no problem but my boss was anal about our cordless microphone. He lived in a fantasy world where everyone wanted to take it from him, it was his precious. Let's say you wanted to give a toast and use our mic? Well, one of our employees would be holding the mic for you so you didn't steal that bad boy. So, singers wanting to use the mic meant someone had to hold it. Also, the sun was setting, and the singers could not read the book anymore, so someone would also have to hold a flashlight throughout the entire ceremony. We drew straws to see who would be the lucky so-and-so, and, wouldn't you know it, I got the short straw. I protested because ceremonies were generally the time when I would sneak a cigarette, but I was overruled. I approached the altar, try to explain to the main singer that I must hold the microphone at all times, and he instructs me that I must wear something over my hair as not to taint the sacred area. I said, no, I really don't want to do that, and try to explain to my boss that I would rather not have to wear something on my head while all of this goes on. My boss says, if they want you to wear a freaking napkin on your head, you do it. So yeah, a cloth napkin was placed on my head and tied so as not to fall off. So, now, here I am holding a microphone, flashlight, and have a white napkin tied onto my head, and I am in such a place where I am in every frame of wedding video and every photo. The ceremony starts and all of my coworkers gather towards the back of the garden, where no one can see them, to watch the spectacle. I am using every ounce of my fiber to keep it together. And then the guy starts singing. The combination of his shrill singing, my visible unease, co-workers laughing at me, and everyone making fun of me over our walkie-talkies was too much and I broke. I just started laughing and could not stop, on their wedding video, forever. I handed the guy the mic and flashlight, and just walked away. I know that every time they watch their wedding video they watch the moment when the poor idiot who worked there cracked and started cackling during their ceremony. So, yeah me? I was at the wedding reception where the bride suddenly disappeared. After half an hour or so, the groom and his friends started looking for her and found her having sex with one of the guests in the rooms above the reception. Groom left angrily, the bride and her family couldn't bear the embarrassment and left as well. Groom's dad invited the rest of the guests to stay since all the food and drinks were paid for. He was actually not upset about the whole thing, because he didn't like the bride at all. He, the band, and some of us less affected by the incident stayed behind to chat and drink at the bar. My date was a friend of the groom's sister's friend, I didn't know the groom that well. They got the marriage annulled in the week after. He remarried some years later to a nicer girl. What happened to the cheating bride I don't know, I never saw her since. Okay, my time to shine. I am Indian and leave in a city called Bangalore. My cousin who is five years older than me was engaged as part of an arranged marriage. To my family's credit, it was not a forced marriage. My cousin and this guy were set up by family friends and after dating for a few months, she said yes. There was no great romantic slash sexual spark, but everything was pretty good on paper. He was a nice guy, a doctor, great job, good family, very progressive, owned a fancy home slash car, and this was good enough for my cousin. The wedding date was fixed two years from the engagement. Usually, Indian weddings happen merely a few months after the engagement 
but there was a death in our family and as per Hindu tradition, no celebrations were to be held for 13 months after the death in order to mourn the deceased. Well, my cousin was bored as hell since she had quit her job after the engagement. She hated it, it was legitimately awful, and she wanted to stay busy until she married and started her own fashion design business. My cousin's fiancé tells her that she might as well enroll in a fashion design degree since she had nothing to do for two years. He even suggested that she go to Bombay because that was the fashion-slash-film capital of India. My cousin agreed and went to Bombay for a year where she met and fell in love with another guy. This time it was all about feelings, emotions, romance and love. She came home after the program ended and confessed to my uncle who flipped out. He refused to call off the wedding since it would destroy his reputation in society and he also felt that her fiancé was a better guy for her. My cousin sucked it up and decided to go through with the wedding. Hindu weddings are a week long and after day one, the two of us were hanging out in her room, watching a Bollywood movie. The storyline was about a girl who runs away the night before her wedding because she is in love with another guy. She cries a lot during the movie and I console her the best I could. Anywho, day two happens and we all go to bed early since it was a pretty exhausting ritual that involved not eating all day. I go in to wake my cousin on day three and she is gone. Just a note on the bed saying that she wants to be with the man she loves. The aftermath was horrific. Everyone was pissed, my aunt cried for months, my uncle lost a lot of friends and business, yes, Indian society can be very judgmental. Unfortunately, sort of weird ending for my cousin. She moved to Bombay and married the guy who turned out to be a total douche. He beat her and kicked her out when she got pregnant. My uncle took her back and helped her get her life back. She had the baby and went to the US for school, paid for by my uncle who wanted her to get out of depression. She studied engineering, met and married a white guy and has been living in California since. Her daughter was adopted by my uncle and aunt and leaves in India with them. She refused to go to the US since she never really developed a close relationship with my cousin, her mom. Not me, a guy I knew from college. The girl is getting ready for her wedding, we're talking getting her makeup done, hair, etc., day of the ceremony, and while she's doing that she's telling the bridesmaid with her about the tens of thousands of dollars in debt she had that she hadn't told her future husband about. Or about how she wasn't really in the profession that he thought she was in, so she didn't have the money she said she did. She was smart enough to con this guy for two years until the wedding day, but wasn't smart enough to realize the person she was talking to was the groom's sister. So she went right to him and told him everything. He was an okay guy, a little full of himself, but he definitely loved her, like, took a trip with her to a special place to get their rings forged out of some special material to symbolize etc etc, levels of love here. He called off the wedding. He's doing fine now, but damn what a terrible thing to do to someone to lie to them for years about who you are so they could help saddle your debt. I'm sure she loved him back in her own way, just, you know, in that sort of, obsessive, I deserve having someone like you to come save me. Crazy sort of way. My friend never made it to the wedding. I encouraged a former friend to leave her boyfriend. He had been our friend for years and he had told my husband and me that he was so happy about his recent promotion, because it meant that he would be able to support her and he finally felt like he could propose. He was going to go pick out a ring the next weekend. I went to the store with her the next day and the whole time she's talking about how boring and normal he is, she's just using him for his car, and how she keeps trying to cheat on him with her ex-boyfriend, but her ex doesn't seem to get the hint that she's interested in him again. I told her she needed to break up with her boyfriend, my other friend, immediately. I lied and told her it was probably why her ex wasn't going for her, he was getting mixed signals because she had a boyfriend. She dumped him a couple of days later after she got her own car. Broke his heart, but at least he hadn't had the chance to go pick out the ring yet or actually ask her to marry him. I never told him, or anyone other than my husband, that I was the one who convinced her to break up with him, but watching him get through that heartbreak, which was horrible, he didn't come out of his room for months except to go to work was way better than watching what would have happened if I hadn't convinced her to break up with him. He's doing great now, still hasn't met anyone else, 
but at least he's over her now. She is no longer my friend, I ghosted her after that. Her ex apparently really wasn't interested in making that mistake all over again, and last I heard she's still alone and living with her parents. All our other friends referred to her as, Satan's bee. An old friend of mine did that. He explained it later that during their relationship of three years he really felt comfortable with this woman being his wife. Then he proposed and she turned into a bridezilla. Not just that, but suddenly she felt like everything in life was done and she only had one more task. Get a baby or two. And she acted the part. Everything was about the wedding. Her dress was designed to be ready for her to be pregnant. They tried. They failed. She wailed. Everything was his fault and her entire world was about the wedding. They fought a lot and she acted as if nothing was the matter in front of anybody else. He stopped loving her just a few weeks after proposing. The wedding day came around and he looked at himself in the mirror, wearing a nice suit, looking the part, but his eyes were dead. He said he had the laughing lines around his eyes but they weren't nearly as visible as they had been in previous years. He could not remember the last time he was happy with his fiance. So he walked out. He then got married to a longtime friend of his, a girl he had known for the better part of the past 10 years. They decided to not get married and not have children. They have a domestic partnership or whatever the tax construction is for partners that don't want to get married, and the only reason they only travel for four months a year is that, if they stay away for longer periods of time, they would be unregistered at the city where they leave. He's nearing his 40s with a hot and sweet girlfriend who's only 31. They both have strong careers going, they're both outgoing, well traveled, and each of them speaks four languages fluently. He keeps calling it a bullet dodged. And it was one he honestly did not see coming. The bridezilla also ended up happy. She got married to a guy who already had kids, and she got pregnant at age 33. They now have four kids, two of her own, two of his and seem to be incredibly happy too. Basically, a happy ending. Marriage is not for everybody, neither are kids. Not my wedding but a friend's. Everything was pretty peachy at first. Everything was fine. I was a guest and not a bridesmaid or anything. I have on my plain old dress. The wedding starts off fine. Everything is normal until the bride comes out. She looks happy. She looks fine. Her hair is up, but then the bride's mother comes charging out of the audience. Ho, 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 over and over again. We restrained her once and the bride, she just kept pushing on. If I had to say one thing about her. She was not a quitter. The mother is placed back in the audience to watch. She had a front row seat which was a mistake. We hear a crash and see that the mother chucked a wine bottle. At her daughter. She missed, but the damage was done. The bridge was upset and just couldn't take it anymore. She walked off with the groom. I don't remember exchanging any vows because once I started drinking everything becomes a blur. When I contacted her after. She told me that her mother hated that her daughter was leaving, and how she is getting her own house, her own family, and everything. Not because she'll miss her daughter but instead because she is wondering who will take of her now. Who will pay for her weekly drinking binges etc. The mother was more concerned that she would have some responsibility in her life. A few years later, her mother was put into an elderly home because she started hoarding and threatening people who came too close to her house. Her daughter rarely visits because her mother was very emotionally abusive to her. Okay really late to the party but here goes nothing. My best friend, saved my life countless times, he's practically a brother to me, had had a terrible love life prior to meeting, the one. But when he did, it was mental. He was crazy for her and she for him. Her parents did not agree at all though, she came from a very rich and respectable family and he was pretty much an orphan. Anyway, her parents, being rich and having arranged the wedding, told him she had cold feet, she didn't, and he should probably get some air. Bro was devastated and wanted to get as far far away as possible, moved within the week some 300 miles away. 
she turned up to the reception expecting my bro but instead found that he left, she thought he'd left her for some unknown reason. Q in a couple of weeks, her parents brought in the, perfect guy for her, rich, smart, albeit short. I don't know if she really loved him but I know he did, she was amazing to everyone. Her parents pressured her into marrying the guy as he was perfect, and sadly she reluctantly agreed. Massive reception ensued, humongous attendance, and I mean around 1000-1500. The pre-wedding reception was amazing, great food, amazing music, etc. Meanwhile, my bro is all depressed, drinking all day and all those shenanigans. I had the amazing idea to tell him about her and him using drunk logic decided to pay her a visit and give her a piece of his mind. So we drove 300 miles to get to the reception. Security guys had the reception pretty tight but we still managed to crash the party, got in during the reception, made the biggest scene ever. He confronted her, she confronted him, they confronted her parents, he punched her douchebag fiancé, they made out. I made out with a hottie. Anyway, they got married in a small reception with very few friends invited, and two years later her parents profusely apologized after seeing that it was going to last. They now have three kids and are very happy together? And I ended up with that hottie, got five kiddos and I love them to bits. I was the best man at a wedding where both the bride and groom were left at the altar. Perhaps not in the way you'd expect, but it was still an awful situation. The wedding was three years ago at the beginning of June when it was 100 plus degrees. F. It normally isn't that hot at that time of the year, but it was just brutal. Not only was it that hot, but it was also ridiculously humid as well. It was so bad that it was to the point where it was just excessively dangerous. All of us involved with the wedding had been watching the forecast and knew ahead of time that it was going to be that dangerously hot. We talked to both the groom and bride about it, but they absolutely refused to have it inside or make any other concessions because the bride, always dreamed of an outdoor wedding next to the water. And yeah, that was a problem in itself. The, water, was next to a murky mosquito producing pond, which didn't help matters either. They crammed in a ton of easy up tents and industrial sized fans, but it hardly did anything to help. We could hardly even talk to each other that day because the half dozen six foot tall fans made it so loud. But wait, there's more. The wedding was supposed to start at 2 p.m. It didn't. Everyone waited outside in the brutal heat for 45 minutes for the wedding planner, who had the rings. She finally shows up and just laughs it off as if it were nothing. By then, practically everyone aside from the parents and a few in the actual wedding party had already left because it was just oppressively hot. A bridesmaid and the mom of the groom both had to be taken down the road and inside because they were suffering from symptoms of heat exhaustion. The minister even booked it the hell out of there and drove off as soon as they both kissed.